Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Tunnel Vision, a show brought to you by USCfootball.com. I'm your host, Keely Orr. We have a special guest in studio today, a special show. Uh, Gavin Morris, Assistant Athletic Director and Director of Player Development, is in the studio with us, joined by Shotgun Spratling and Ryan Abraham. Gavin, we're very excited to have you today. We've tried to have you on this show for a while. We finally were successful today, so thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. So uh, as long uh, as well as Gavin, we'll be talking about uh, all the latest news in USC football. And of course, we'll be taking your calls. Uh, our number is 5124-TUNNEL. You can call and we have Micah, our intern, screening your calls and getting ready for those calls for Gavin. Uh, we are also taking your questions, comments, and cons concerns on Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, and YouTube. So tweet at us, comment. Call any way you can get a hold of us. We will take your comments and questions. Um, but guys, a fun show today. Gavin, um, for the people who don't know who you are, you kind of work behind the scenes. Uh, explain what you do for USC and your role uh, at the university. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. Uh, I do a lot of recruiting, uh, official visits, uh, on-campus recruiting. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with the current players, um, you know, uh, a lot of our players, go, you know, go through things between breaking up with girlfriends, death in the family, uh, you know, just all kinds of issues that an 18, 21-year-old, if you have kids, you know, go through. And uh, just try to be there as a big brother, as a, uh, as a mentor, um, but also, you know, just showing them somebody's walked in their shoes, been there before, been through college. Um, and, you know, I, like I said, every day is, a, uh, is an adventure for me. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I'm blessed that, you know, every day is not just I sit behind the decks and, you know, type papers all day. Uh, <laughs> every, you know, some days could be super busy. Some days could be a little slower than others. Um, but, you know, the thing is I got a great team that I work with, um, you know, great supporting staff uh, and, uh, you know, great head coach that, uh, that I work with. Now, you, like you said, your role, uh, kind of you're doing everything. How long have you been in your current role, and how long have you been at USC? I've been at USC five years. Wow. Um, I started off, already. Wow. Yeah, I started off as a recruiting analyst. Then I went to a high school relations coordinator, uh, and then director of player development, and then uh, um, got my promotion uh, in January. But uh, like I said, I'm I blessed just to – to, like I say, everybody, it's a running joke in our office, you know, what does Gavin do? <laughs> <laughs> what doesn't he do? Yeah, I'm probably the only person, uh, you know, in, in college football that doesn't have an office or desk. I've probably been moved about <laughs> six times. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've been on the road. I'm probably the only, I'm only uh, non-coach in America that's probably been on the road. I've been on the road for four years in a row, um, thanks to Coach Helton. Um, so, like I said, I do a, I do a lot of different things. Uh, um, but the main thing, like I said, my job is just build relationships uh, with recruits, with coaches, um, just so we have a relationship, uh, you know, when we're recruiting somebody. If someone, someone were to ask me what Gavin's role was, Gavin is the USC resident my guy. Because <laughs> anytime someone comes around, it's like, oh, yeah, Gavin's my guy. <laughs> everyone, that's how they describe Gavin. Oh, that's my guy, Gavin. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Gavin has great relationships with everyone. You see him, you know, when, whenever an opposing team comes in, there's always guys that USC had recruited that will come over and say hello to Gavin yeah. as well, you know, because he's always he always keeps those great relationships and everything. So he's the type of guy you have to have in a program. You have to have a guy that can build relationships. You know, the, the great recruiting staffs have you know everyone can can build, but that's not it's not everyone's forte. Yeah. So you, you'll have a guy like Ed Orgeron who can make great relationships with whoever he meets, but not every coach can do that. So Gavin's a guy that can fill in a lot of the blanks for for any coaching staff, and you know can be the guy that knows all the parents, knows all you know knows every player in the recruitment to to see who they need to be talking to the most and, and try to figure out the the relationships and and how they're going to go about a recruitment. I, I would guess uh, is the best way to say it there too. Yeah, I mean the, you know the key in recruiting is just find out who's a champion, you know who's gonna who's gonna be the who's gonna be a hurdle, and who's gonna be the champion to you know help you make a decision on on the kid choosing to go to your school or not. So interesting. The uh, for your background, you've been at USC for five years. Correct. Before that, you had a lot of relationships working on like the whole seven on seven 
Correct. circuit and stuff. And you might even uh, post it a little bit on uscfootball.com. <laughs> I don't know if we talk about it on the pair stuff. Yeah. A- A-Y. <laughs> I can't say some of my names, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I like to say, you know, rest in peace to Gary P. Because, uh, oh, yeah. you know, um, I, I lived in Atlanta 15 years and um, uh, I started, you know, I've always been an SC fan, my whole family. Uh, it's SE. Uh, my uncle's got, you know, part of the original Wild Bunch. But, you know, being in Atlanta, you know, I, that's when, you know, when the internet just started blowing up, recruiting sites blowing up. And, uh, you know, I started with Gary P. And, and, and Ryan was, you know, was also there. And, uh, you know, I'm probably one of the only guys that started off on the other side <laughs> and now is, is, is in here. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. just blessed. Well, how did that help, though, working on that seven-on-seven circuit for kind of the roles you have now? Because you obviously built a lot of relationship with coaches and players and stuff then. Uh, I mean, it helped uh, It helped tremendously. Um, you know, when I first got there, like I said, uh, you know, I worked for an organization called B2G. Uh, they were the pioneers of seven-on-seven. Um, and from that organization, a lot of other seven-on-seven organizations split off and started their own thing, and they're kind of – the guys behind the scenes and uh you know i got a chance to work with a lot of those guys and so i i came in with a lot of relationships um you know unfortunately there probably won't be another person like me because all of a sudden ncaa makes a rule called iwap which you know i think it's very unfair um because of a, a young person like my well i'm not young but a person like myself <laughs> don't go person, lying to him yeah, now. yeah i'm yeah. definitely yeah <laughs> you can see the gray hair but a person <laughs> like myself or somebody in my role that's in seven on seven uh you know how do you get to college football you know you got ncaa put a rule there that is not allowing them to make that transition from high school or seven on seven to college and there are a lot of guys in the business. You know, everybody got – there's bad apples everywhere, but a lot of guys in the business that really are there for the kids and can bring a lot to, uh, to you know, to different institutions. And because of this rule, um, they're kind of being locked out. Uh. Now, I can – at a bar, tell you the real reason, but you know, we're going <laughs> to nice. keep it PG and uh, just be careful. You don't want to talk trash about the NCAA. A lot, a lot of big NCAA fans here, no, none at all. So that's, yeah, so this uh, was a, nothing but love for NCAA, you know. But, yeah, so this was a rule change that came in last summer, I, I believe it was. I think it was two summer, years ago, couple years two ago, years ago. Yeah. so you can't have any prior relationships uh, with high school kids. And I get it, some people were using uh, the rule, you know, they were using leveraging. But, um, you know, a guy like myself who didn't play college football, dad's not in college football, dad's not a coach. How do you get into college football? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was fortunate enough, I, you know, I did four or five years um, at B2G, built my relationship, did, th- did things the right way, and I had an opportunity, um, uh, you know, to come to USC. Um, but, you know, I got people all the time that say, you know, how do I, how, you know, how, how can I get to college? You know, how can I be like you? And I was like, you know, unfortunately, they made a rule that that is preventing people from doing that. Um, so, I, I think looking at your your BTG two G background made this uh, NFL draft a little special too. Oh yeah, because <laughs> Iman Marshall obviously is a guy that was with B two G. He's a guy that you you guys have both basically grown together. You know, during his time you know, in high school to to college. What was it like for you to see him be drafted by the Baltimore Ravens and see him now in mini camps and stuff? Man, this is just a blessing. Uh, I just know how much uh, he gave to this university um, and just how hard he worked. Um, you know, I've been with uh, Biggie since he was uh, ninth grade. Uh, you know, I had guys like Trent Irwin, Jordan Lasley, uh, um, t- went to the pros. Uh, I'm over, I know I'm forgetting some other <laughs> – forget a lot of names. Uh, Nico Fala, uh, get well, Nico. Um, yeah, yeah, and, uh, Achilles, right? Yeah, Jordan Simmons. Uh, so I've been blessed, you know. Like I said, I've been blessed that I've been around a lot of great athletes. But you know, mine was was very special um, because he, you know, I mean, he basically been a four year starter, um, got his degree, um, you know, and he 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 did it the right way. Um, he built relationships, um, and I, I always tell my kids like, uh, you know. F- 50% of your friends should not play sports or athletic. 50% of your friends should be uh, outside of sports. Because when you leave school, you know, that's going to be your networking. When you want to start a business or you want to do something, 
that's your, that's your foundation yeah. for 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 life after college. And if you just hang around, if you just hung around, uh, you know, your fill, your football players or basketball player, that's gonna be your network, and you're not gonna go too far. And you know, USC is one of the best colleges, you know, in the world, top 15, top 10. Uh, and those guys, those people that you're sitting next to are gonna be CEOs. They go start businesses, you know, and you could be part of that. Yeah. And if you went through college and didn't talk to the people to the left or the right, you know, that's yes, about $100,000 a year, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and even if they're not, their daddy might be CEO of a company or somebody, you know, a company that you might want to get involved with. And, you know, Biggie just did everything the right way. And uh, I'm just so proud of him. I think he's going to have a great career, uh, long career. Uh, like I said, I'm proud of all our guys that are in the pros right now because I know how hard they work uh, to get there. That's, I think it's really good advice. And, uh, you know, just talking – um, you know, Jake Olson is going to, you know, he has his own, co you know, company now, speaking engagement and all that stuff. His high, his uh, college roommate as his freshman year is his manager. Like basically, he, then I talked to Daniel, I talked to him, he was like, yeah, I basically won the lottery. I was like, you know, we were partners just from being roommates in college, you know, so that was outside of like the football stuff. And, Jake's my guy. That's yeah. my guy right there. <laughs> That's my guy. We should probably mention that. So uh, we're going to have Jake, um, well, we're trying to have him on this show at some point, but we're going to do a event on June 1st. Uh, it's like a kind of state of the union spring, you know, post spring, post NFL draft kind of stuff. And you're welcome to come too. You've come to some of the events before, but uh, so it'll be June first. It's a Saturday from three to six at Common Space Brewery in Hawthorne. Uh, really cool place. It's right near SpaceX, and we got some cool guests. So we'll have our staff here. I don't think Shotgun's gonna be able to make it. He's traveling, but uh, we'll have the USCFootball.com staff. Like Gerard will be there. We'll do a panel, like kind of like this. We'll talk uh, recruiting. We'll talk the team and all that kind of stuff but we'll also have uh jake olson will be there which is cool former uh first round draft pick lawrence jackson is going to come out uh that'll be fun he's come to some of our events before but we'll also have like from a national perspective uh bruce feldman talking to college football and arash markazi from the la times formerly of espn he's everywhere um so yeah it'll be it should be a really fun event so hope you guys can make it you know maybe gavin will stop by too <laughs> we'll we'll invite some you know we'll try to invite some coaches if they want to come down and have a beer or two but uh you know, it should be fun. I've I've gone. I did some tastings there. It was it was a really cool brewery. I like <laughs> you like you like craft beers. You're kind of craft beer guy or not really? Uh, <laughs> you know, I, beer makes me bloated. I'm a <laughs> I'm a, I'm like a margarita Tito's nice type of guy. Yeah, on that one. Uh, so we have a Facebook question from Mike Connolly. He says, "G Man is a hell of a recruiter. What is his secret?" So I know you can't divulge too much, but what do you think your secret is when it comes to recruiting? Uh, I don't think there is a secret. Um, I think, you know, I, sometimes people give me a lot of credit um, for, you know, for stuff. But like I said, it's just it's, it's a team. You know, it's not just me. It's coaches. Uh, it's other, you know, people in our recruiting department. Our student workers do a great job. Um, and I think I think just in recruiting, just in general, just being genuine and just being honest. Uh, you know, I've I've had kids. You know, this point, you know, you're honest with them. And, you know, kids like, oh, well, you know, other coaches are telling me this or telling me that. And then by the time you get to December, you know, everybody shows their hand. And then the people who are dishonest or who just tell lies or, or just fabricate things to make you feel good, it starts to come out. And by the time it gets closer to signing days, the, the truth always comes out. So if you've been truthful the whole time, even if it's not what they wanted to hear at first, um, they respect you, and then in the end, you know, you know, nine out of ten times it, it, it works. Just being, you know, just being, just real. You know, I always say, just be real. Um, I, you know, I, I'm when it comes to especially kids, I, I build relationships where you don't have to kiss their butt or, you know, I tell a kid, I'm not gonna tell you how great you are. My time, <laughs> you know, my my time is money. You know, so if I'm spending time talking to you, texting you, recruiting you. That means you are something because I don't have to do this, you know. So that's kind of you know, I, and I'm up front, and uh, and usually it works out. Um, usually it works out, but like I said, it's not just there's no secret code. It's a team effort. Um, you know, everybody, you know, in our recruiting department from uh, Trey, Spencer, Kelsey, Ryan, uh, you know, Big Sam, Curtis, 
Uh, shout out to Sam. Oh, yeah, shout out to Sam. <laughs> He's a Tennessee guy. My wife loves that. You know, yeah, like, uh, yeah. You don't like the Tennessee thing? Come on. Uh, yeah, I got a little, you know, he got a big Tennessee thing in his office. It's like, come on, man, we're USC, you know. <laughs> Tennessee, Georgia, you know, he's a down south guy, you know, but that's my guy. But like I said, it's a team effort. And we, we, we you know, no jobs too big, no jobs too small. And uh, I think, you know, we don't have the biggest recruiting department, but we all work together. And, uh, you know, if somebody has a, something to do on Saturday, hey, look, I'll be there. I'll take care of it. So, you know, we got each other's back. And, you know, just being real with these recruits and uh, truthful and honest. You know, and sometimes you, you lose out because the school will, will uh, tell them a lot of lies. But, you know, that's why you got the portal and, you know, kids will get to <laughs> school and they'll figure out, you know, it ain't always what, you know, what they said in recruiting. And uh, so – how you much can't, oh. can't burn any bridges uh, no, nowadays no, no, with no, recruits no, because no. you never know when they're going to come back through with you the portal. just never <laughs> know. True. Has the transfer portal just changed everything that you guys do? Is it? I mean, it I, seems like it's such a huge deal now. I think recruiting, just college football is changing uh, year by year, month by month. Um, I don't even think the NCAA knows what they're doing. I mean, not not they're doing, but they don't know when they make a rule – what, yeah. the, what the repercussions would no, be. That's very so common in life. People, yeah. You make a law to, to prevent one thing and it makes it worse because yeah. you don't realize that you know there's unintended consequences always happen. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, uh, like I said, you just have to be open. Uh, you have to work with your compliance department just to always make sure that you're doing things the right way. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the portal, you know, is I'm, I'm all for players. So I'm for, I'm a player yeah, guy. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm all for the players. I just think that uh, the NCAA should have educated. They should have round and went to every school and educated their kids on the portal, how the portal worked, how the scholarship works, uh, you know, um, and how much time they have. Uh, I don't know if all the kids know the information about the portal. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, some kids are learning the hard way. Some, some aren't. Yeah. So – because there's, I mean, that's the big thing. I think Dennis Dodd just did a story on it today about there's just so many kids in the portal because of the initial scholarship limitations. That's a huge limitation. They're, like a school like Illinois planned for this. They they left some openings. So they were going to try to get some kids from the portal. And they've done that. A couple of USC kids, whatever. But it's hard. You know, if a school has one or two spots left, and there's, but they have eight guys in the portal. There's, there's just the math isn't going to work out. There's no way the, all those guys can end up at Division One schools. So you might see a lot of FCS, you know, FCS stuff, yeah. uh, which isn't terrible, but there's just not room to bring in all these guys that are in the portal. Well, a lot of schools, not your big time Power Fives, your, you know, your Michigan, USC's, Alabama, Georgia's. A lot of us use the scholarships up on signing day. A lot of your other schools have always saved their scholarships just because somebody didn't sign, somebody comes up, you know, especially like your JCs might graduate later. Oh, yeah. So they've always saved it. Some some of the schools got lucky. Some of the schools playing. Uh, you know, um, there's no rhyme or reason. Like it's, it's yeah. stuff stuff is changing as you know as we speak. Uh, but Portal's interesting. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's kind of the Wild West out there right now. I think there's going to be some FCS teams that are just stacked with talent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's just a lot of bounce backs and stuff, or, you know, D1 guys that are, have gone, and, you know, there's just nowhere for them to go. You know, and it's going to be that, you know, the, your cream of the crop that are in the, in the transfer portal are going to sign somewhere. Yeah. Places are going to find space for them, be able to find a spot. Right. Yeah, Justin that, Fields goes in there, he's going to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the next tier, I think there's just going to be a lot of kids like, there's just not space for places, or there's not a, they're not a good fit uh, for them. So I think that they're going to end up at FCS potentially, and I think there's going to be a couple of FCS programs out there that are going to just stack up on kids, and you're just going to have. I hope it's Morehouse, my college. I hope y'all get everybody. You know, shout out to Morehouse. Nice. So we actually have a live caller on the line. So right. let's go to that. It is Jagger Wright from Huntington Beach. Uh, hello, Jagger. You're online. What's your question? Hey, uh, my question for Gavin was Kyle Ford, uh, like the one person in this class that you knew that like the whole entire staff knew you guys couldn't leave or let leave Southern California, couldn't let him leave USC? All of our kids can't leave USC. I mean, <laughs> California. Uh, Kyle's special. Going to be a great player. He's working hard to get back from his injury. Um, but, you know, all of our players, um, you know, we fight hard to to, to keep – 
our kids in California, uh, the, you know, the ones that, that recruit in L.A. Uh, or in California. Uh, but, you know, Kyle's no different than, than Drake London or um, Drake Jackson or Max Williams or um, – Getting a brain freeze in here from <laughs> our players. It but, happens. It happens. But, uh, you mentioned uh, the high, higher ranked guys. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, see, I don't know what they rank. I don't even look at rankings. So, uh, but you know, we try to keep everybody. Manier, I know Manier, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, I, we really don't look at rankings. Um, so it's not like okay. We want to keep Kyle here and, and not Drake. Because, like, Kyle's know. a five star, so you have to, it's not no, a priority. So. No, no. Um, it's, you know, we want to, you know, you get 25 scholarships or, or how many scholarships every school has, and you just try to, to, to get the best. And uh, because, you know, like I said, it, recruiting is a crapshoot. Um, just like the draft's a crapshoot. You know, I, I, I compare, everybody wants four or five stars. If you look, just look at the NBA playoffs, you know, you got Lehigh, you got Weber State, you got uh, Davidson, uh, Davidson yeah. <laughs> you got over in Greece, you got San Diego State. Those yeah. are your top players in NBA right now. So it's a crapshoot. You know, you try to get, get high character guys that go, you know, do stuff on and off the field the right way. and But also, you know, great football players. And uh, I think, you know, I think we did. Like I said, we've, we've had number one class, number three class. I don't know what this class was ranked, but uh, we got some, you know, we have some great talent. And, uh, you know, the thing is for this season is the guys that we already have on the team, they're going to get better. They've gotten better. And uh, like I said, I think we're going to have a special year. And, uh, you know, I just hope everybody comes out, supports us. No matter what, we Trojans. We all need, you know, everybody needs to be out there. Game one, I think that's September 1st or August 31st. August 31st. Yeah. August 31st. Uh, Fresno State, so you know everybody needs to be out there supporting us because we're gonna be a fun team to watch. Uh, we're gonna be exciting, uh, you know. My Texas crew, they're bringing a high octane offense. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I give them a hard time, but you know them boys are special. You know, I gotta give my Texas crew a shout out. Nice. They, them boys are special. Graham so Harrell and Mike Jank. Thanks, Jagger. Uh, yes. Jagger. Jagger. Thanks, Jagger. Yeah, I we got to write this down. Jagger. Time. Thank you, Jagger, for the, Thanks, the Jagger call. Thanks, Jagger, for the call. And just to remind everyone who are asking questions, Gavin can't really talk about anything currently with recruiting or about anyone in the transfer portal. So yeah. adjust your questions accordingly. Um, yeah, so no 2020 guys. If you want to, like, you had a specific question about someone from the class, there might be an interesting story about the recruitment. Uh, I know we, we actually talked, we we're going to talk, he can't really talk about Chris Steele. He's someone that's in the transfer portal, but. We, that was going to be, before we had Gavin on the show, that was going to be one of the main topics. But he's, you know, declared he's going to go to Oregon. So that's, uh, uh, you know, we were reporting he was down to USC and, and Oregon. Um, and, you know, he's uh, going with Oregon. So probably not going to talk about that very much. You know, Gavin yes. can't. So, but we, yeah. uh, we, that was one of the topics we were going to do. So we want to at least mention it. Yes, yes. Uh, but we actually have a Facebook question. It's kind of interesting. Danny says, Gavin, do you warn the coaches about kids that might have issues that could come up later if uh, they're recruited to USC? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, that's something. That's part of my job building a relationship is, is getting to know uh, any type of red flags that come up. Um, and I think that's something that's fans – you know, when you see, when, you know, you, you go, well, why is this school not recruiting this kid? And there could be something behind the scenes that's preventing us from, from doing Or we might have did our intel and say, look, this is not the type of guy that we want in our program or the type of character um, that we want in our program. Um, and, uh, you know, character, I mean, just look at the NFL. I mean, they're going high. They're high on character. And it's trickling down to college. Um, you know, the Raiders just took uh, – Big Raiders fan, you know. We took, I forget my Steve man's Fer name. Farrell. Farrell, yeah, because I wanted Wilkins. We took, we took <laughs> Farrell, because he's a high character guy, you know, uh, high character guy. But uh, it's trickling down because, like I said, you know, one bad apple can affect ten kids. So uh, you know, if, if you lose ten kids or you lose your locker room, you can have issues. So uh, character is very high. Uh, Clay's big on, on on high character guys. And right now, like I said, everybody's bought in. We've got a great group of guys. Uh, and uh, like I said, I think we're going to be special this year. You know, August 31st, Fresno State. Get your tickets now. <laughs> uh, we have a question on YouTube uh, from Thanos. Uh, he says, how did the Britton Allen situation come together? He seemed like a solid to Georgia Tech. <laughs> that was a default. My man default makes magic happen. Uh, 
great coach. You know, he's been in the Big 12. Uh, he went down th there to IMG. Uh, I think I was on the road, so I didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> I, I come back on the Friday. We got a kid that was committed to, I think, Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, Britton Allen, great kid, Bam. We call him Bam. Uh, so when you say Britton, I, I got to remember this because we all call him Bam. But great mom. Uh, matter of fact, he has one of the best moms out there. Uh, but Bam's going to be a great player. Um, you know, I know based on rank, he wasn't the highest. But, as you know, if you've been out to spring ball, you just saw how great he played, how much energy I mean, we call him Bam for a reason because he has everything moving. Uh, <laughs> but he's going to, you know, he's going to be good. He's going to be real good. And he's getting better. Great kid. Um, and uh, I'm just glad he's a Trojan. Glad so he's a Trojan. Joe DeForest is the one that. Joe, okay, yes. yeah. I, excuse me. Yeah. I'm used <laughs> if to. If they didn't know, you know, I was like, yeah. I think he's talking about yeah, Joe DeForest. Yeah, DeForest. DeForest. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm used to. I, you, you I, I'm getting real to... comfortable. I think I'm in the <laughs> office. You know, we call everybody got nicknames and, that, that's and fine. abbreviations. That's fine. I mean, he's a new Joe coach. Joe DeForest. Coach Joe DeForest. He's a new coach. He's the new outside linebacker coach. So yes. if Some you weren't familiar. I might not even. Graham gets mad at me because I call him Harrell. And it's Harrell. You know, so. And if anybody's on YouTube, Gerard is uh, chiming in as well, yeah. and he is translating for you as well. Defo <laughs> equals Joe wow, DeForest. Wow, own translation. <laughs> Gerard. <laughs> Gerard also gave a shout out to you. He said, "Wow, Gavin Morrison Studio, special guy right here. Five recruiters in one." So apparently, Gerard Martinez thinks you're good at recruiting. <laughs> I go, I go back with you. Oh, uh, we actually have another live caller on oh, the nice. line. Okay, uh, that's my roommate right there, Eddie from <laughs> Whittier. That Coach O question. I, I see, see my roommate. I sent him that I was coming on here, and he's a big LSU fan. He he just wanted to do this. He just wanted to do that. Uh, so Eddie is on the line. Eddie, what's your question for Gavin or the team? Hey, Eddie. Yeah, how's it going, guys? Um, I was actually on my way to work, and I remembered you guys were on. So I, I don't know if you guys have covered anything on Chris Steele, but my thing is um, I know he was a big get. I know we wanted him. Um, is there a reason why we kind of took out of him? You must not you, him you, again, or? you must not got the memo. I can't talk about Chris. Yeah, I think yeah. Not, call, yeah. not talk about I don't, him. you know. Because he's in the transfer portal. So he's basically a recruitable athlete right now. We so have he, to he's go only to committed, him. so he's not signed with Oregon. So, therefore, Gavin cannot talk about him. However, you know, he came away from the Florida situation. Um, you know, he, he decided to leave that situation. He came back. You know, he was really – he liked – he had a great relationship uh, with Dante William, – Dante Williams? Williams, yeah. Williams at Oregon. Um, and that relationship helped pull him to Oregon. His parents really wanted him to go to, to USC. Uh, but he ended up going to Oregon, committing there. However, he still is – he's – Signed financial aid, I believe, but he's not signed with the program. So, therefore, Gavin cannot speak about him because he's still a recruitable athlete technically. Um, so, he's not able to talk about him. But that's another player that, that USC has missed out on. You know, Chris Steele is another local guy that decided to leave the area. And when he went to Florida, you know, he was the first player uh, to commit uh, from US or to commit from California to Florida since 2010. Um, and it's similar with DJ Yuang uh leaving to go to Clemson. Clemson had not come across to, to the state of California before Joe Nada, who's a Folsom kid in Northern California. And before that, they hadn't signed a player since 1990. Wow. So, you know, it's been a long time. But that's what happens when you become a national program like Clemson has become. And that's something that USC was able to do previously uh, with more – uh, conviction because you know when you go five and seven you can't go across the country to grab a lot of kids. But when you're winning a national we got championship, Brent Allen. he's from yeah. Florida. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. And let, let me just say something. I don't look if SEC Clemson. If you want to come get Cali kid, it's cool. We'll see you in a year. <laughs> better play them. <laughs> better play them. Or they'll be in the portal. Stay away from California kids. SEC Clemson, whoever else. Stay away, please. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie, for the call. Sorry Thanks, we Eddie. couldn't fully answer that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gerard said... He called in on his way to work. That was cool. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Uh, Ga Gerard said Gavin's back to his B2G days where no one knew anyone's real name. So... <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm bad with names. I can just tell you that. I like the Harrell. Like that's yeah, Harrell. <laughs> well, he, he got on me yesterday because we were on the phone with a recruit and I introduced... Well, the mother FaceTimed and, you know, I'm saying... You know, I'm past phone to Coach. I don't know. Harrell. I, I said Harrell. Here's Coach Harrell. And, <laughs> and, and Graham just looked at me like, so you don't even know my name. Cause I, in the office, we say Graham, so yeah. I don't even say last name. Yeah. So it's been a running joke 
today and yesterday, Harrell. But <laughs> he's kind of bad with names. My wife, I, I'm. I, Hope you don't screw up her name. Or your kid's yeah. name. Well, yeah, yeah. I can't <laughs> screw up my son's name. <laughs> it's Gavin. <laughs> the, oh, I'm sorry, real quick. The, the you talked about Graham Harrell. Um, he's been the big talk. You know, everyone's excited about the offense. Like, what's it been like, kind of working with him behind the scenes? Oh man, that guy. He's different. I mean, he he his work ethic. The whole Texas crew. Uh, Dougie JB. John David Baker, Seth, Seth Dodge, Dougie. I call him Dougie. Um, <laughs> Doge. I Doge. That's how you pronounce it. I call him Dougie. <laughs> uh, you know, those, I mean, we sit there and we watch film with Lenny, uh, Vandaway, uh, Vianne. Um, you know, we sit there and we watch film all day, every day. I mean, and we're watching game film. Uh, this is of recruits. Uh, of recruits. Yeah. I mean, Graham is, is he, he turns over every rock. I mean, he takes recruiting serious. Uh, I mean, he, he he doesn't care about stars. Put the game tape. I mean, there was a kid that just committed to another school. I'm not going to say, you put the tape on it, it just doesn't match. So, you know, he's about watching game film, not just highlights. Uh, you know, we'll, t we'll find the, the – um, it's a new, uh, new system out there that has all the, you know, camp videos. Um, and we're watching everything. And, uh, I mean, he sits there all day to the evening watching recruits. Um, and, uh, like I said, I, I think we're going to be special August 31st. Get your tickets, Fresno State. Um, and, like I said, it, it, you know, tell everybody, everybody needs to jump on this this, band, this train right now. Because once it gets moving, you know, either you're on or you're off. You know, just like in recruiting. I tell people all the time, either you're chosen or you're not. Either we go you go win with us or we go beat you. Period. That's how I that's how I look. I'm a competitor. That's how I believe. And from a fan standpoint, I know last year was, you know, wasn't the best year, but these kids have been working their butts off and you know, they deserve everybody to be out there August thirty first to support us. You know, and support and support those players because, you know, like I said, they're taking care of business in the classroom and on in you know, in the weight room and on the practice field. And, you know, Trojans need to support each other. So, Gavin Morris, the optimist. Okay. Yeah, very good. Yeah. When it comes like to it. high schoolers who are talented and, you know, five stars, you kind of mentioned already, but how do you deal with egos? I mean, you're a grown man talking to kids, essentially. How do you keep yourself in check and not be like, listen, kid, you, you need to take a <laughs> chill pill, you know? How do you deal with egos and whatnot? <laughs> I mean, you got to stroke it a little bit. But, like I said, I build relationships. So, I get to a point where... You know, the ones that I get close with, we, we, we know each other on a certain level that you can talk to them a little differently. Uh, you know, I've, I I had a recruit, <laughs> you know, kind of made me mad, kind of was saying the wrong things and, you know, kind of talked to him in a stern way. And uh, I think a coach was like, you know, you talking about your boss? I said, no, that was a recruit. The kid ended up, you know, signing with us. But, you know, it, once you build a relationship with a kid and, and it's not that – I don't just care about you just as a, a football player, but I care about you as a person. It's different. You know, even the kids that don't come to SC, uh, you know, I got players that go other places. They'll still check them on me, you know, and, you know, and that's the thing. You don't know where I'll be in five years. I tell, I tell kids all the time, you know, treat everybody with respect. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my relationships that I build, um, you know, you just don't know where you'll be in five years. I can be in the NFL. I can be – not at another school. There's only one job I would leave SC for, and it's the Lakers. So, Jeannie Buss, if you need to hire, I know you need Magic Johnson left. You know, I am available. They, uh, they could use a recruiter. Yeah. Hey, I'm trying agent. to tell you, Jeannie, I hope you're listening. <laughs> I'm available. Yeah. Another Come USC on, Lakers. person? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. Trojans Laker. take care of Trojans, like I said. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, it's about building a relationship. Once you got a certain relationship, you could – people. You know, if you don't have a relationship, yeah, you, you need to, oh, you're the greatest. But when you build a relationship and people really feel that it's genuine, you can talk to a person a little bit differently. Because, like I said, I, I'm not a coach, so I don't talk X's and O's. Uh, so, I mean, if, if, if I'm teaching X's and O's, we got a problem, you know. <laughs> um, so, it, you know, it's about life, you know. And I, I think that's what's getting lost in college football as a whole. 
you know, you got coaches making ninety three million dollars, but you know, the the whole thing about college football is about turning these men, these young men, into men by the time they they leave. I think everything's about wins and and this, but those kids got to get a degree. We got to prepare them for the real world. You know, even if they make the NFL, if they don't know anything about finances, somebody's gonna take advantage of. If they don't know anything about, you know, uh, uh, how to treat a woman, their career can be over. So we got, you know, back in the day, football, you know, your football coach was the, the guy, the mentor of young men. And I think, you know, now college with so much money involved in college football that people are losing what, you know, we're here to help these kids. And so, I, you know, I try to build a relationship where, hey, look, I know it's about going to the NFL. Like for me, I, I can't control you going to the NFL, but I can help you become a, a man so one day you'll be a father a husband so those are things that i try to help our kids do and I, as well as recruit i think the relationship aspect is very good so if we you've been around recruiting a lot we've covered it for a long time when you see like what gavin mentioned a player that doesn't that you recruited that you didn't sign and you still have a relationship with them that shows that you really built that i remember going down uh you know ed orgeron one of the you know best recruiters we've ever seen around here uh, down at the Senior Bowl years ago when he was, I think he might have been fired from the Old Miss head coaching job. Deshaun Jackson and his family walk by, and they're just like over the moon. And that, you know, he signed with Cal, but they loved Orton. Like the, he built that relationship, and, you know, years later, it was still there. So I think that's a, a really good point. You just build these relationships, sign or not, it's still there. Like you still have it. And that's, so that's, that's real, and that's something that I think a kid will, you know, would, would gravitate towards, like, hey, that's a real relationship, not just, oh, you didn't sign with us, I'm never going to talk to you again. Kind yeah, of I mean, some of the kids, like, like I tell them, they don't, you know, not SC's not for everybody. You know, um, it's a tough academic school. Um, you know, from a football side, you know, we expect we, we, we expect the most. Some kids not built for, uh, you know, for, for the big time, you know, and so some kids are, but, you know, you still build those relationships. I, I, some kids, they go to the school. I tell them, hey, look, I still want to come to your wedding or, you know, still be involved in your life, um, you know, because, like I said, it's about helping people. And uh, that's why I got into the game for when I got into 707. It wasn't, you know, I never dreamed that I would be, you know, at USC. I got in to help kids get to college and just be, and mentor. You know, I, I did that on the side, you know, and it was just about mentoring kids and helping kids you know, get off the streets on Saturdays and Sundays so they're not in gangs or they're not, you know, doing the wrong thing. And, uh, you know, I was just blessed to, to you know, for opportunities to, to come work at SC. But uh, I, th I think that's for me, I have to, you know, last year was, 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 was tough, but you also, you always got to remember why, you, why you're why in the business, Yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I'm just blessed to be here. We have a fun question on YouTube from Tony. He says, do you remember the first player you helped reel in and commit to USC or the first verbal you got for SC? Who was it and what was that feeling oh, like? The first, <laughs> probably the two, um, probably would be, uh, uh, well. Was that the 2015 uh, class? Well, or I, like I started right, I started probably three days for sign day. I mean, of course, I was around for Fremont Marshall, um, but uh, probably it would be uh, um, Jack Jones and EJ Price. Um, uh, <laughs> Jack Jones, you know, <laughs> that's my guy. I, oh, I, well, he's a, I can't talk about him, but oh. uh, uh, EJ Price, um, uh, you know, that was, that was, it was, you know, we had to go down to Georgia. <laughs> that was my first time on the road. So um, it was interesting, you know, and, and at that time, T. Martin was there who just, you know, I learned so much from T. Uh, he was my big brother, my mentor. Um, he helped me out so much, um, you know, uh, and a lot of stuff that, that, I've, that I've learned and the, the, the person I became, you know, in my profession, uh, you know, was help uh, from T. But yeah, he, uh, <laughs> good guy to learn from. He was an yeah. ace, oh. ace recruiter. Yeah. You know? yeah, I mean, he's one of the best. He's one of the best in the business. Uh, but EJ Price was definitely <laughs> those was, it was definitely um, was 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 eye opening. That was like first time on the road, going up against uh, went up against Georgia and Auburn. That was my first time dealing with the SEC. Uh, it's different. <laughs> Some of the questions they ask is <laughs> different. Um, 
you know. But uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was exciting. I remember one night, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to keep everything PG. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I, I we don't remember, want to get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, he started asking some just weird questions, and, it, and it's like questions at another school with negative recruit against you. And I thought, like Georgia was in the room. I'm like, you know, I think he Facetimed me. I was like, you know, turn your camera around. Let me see who's in the room. Who's telling you all this stuff? Where are you making this stuff up from? And he's showing the room, and, and uh, you know, um, I mean, that was that was a that was you know that was one of my big fishes that I didn't have a relationship prior to coming to uh, SC. Um, it was unfortunate. You know that um, you know that he transferred, um, but you know I, that just showed. He probably texted me uh, a few months ago because I think he went pro to CFL, oh, and okay. uh, you know he just told me to thank Clay because Clay did a lot for that kid. People just don't know how much, um, even though that kid did not graduate from SC, how much time Clay put in because he wanted to save his life and make sure that he had a chance in life. And, uh, you know, because at the time, I remember it was a story that he hit Clay or some <laughs> stuff. It was just like, what is going on? They yeah. were just lies. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Clay, Clay's a great man. And uh, i never forget when he, a couple months ago he sent me a text, you know, just thanking me, but also thanking Clay for all the time that he put in. And people just don't know every Monday they used to, even when he was on the team, every Monday they would have lunch, mm -hmm. uh, meet up, just so they can talk about life. And every Monday. Um, you that's know, cool, for that man. whole year. And uh, Clay, you know, kept them there. You know, because a lot of schools, but, and that's what parents understand. This is a business. You go to certain schools, I'm not going to say what, certain conferences, certain, they'll cut you. They'll run you out, you know. And, uh, you know, because, you know, some kids do things. They're 18 years old. They do dumb things. And it gives an excuse, well, you know what, maybe he's not the, the player we thought. Maybe he's not the five-star guy. And they'll cut you or they'll run you out. And uh, you know Clay, Clay's thing. Is he, he wants to he wants to make sure these kids have a fighting chance in life, especially the guys that come from uh, tough backgrounds and difficult backgrounds. He he won't just put you out there on the street um, like some schools will do. Um, and uh, you know EJ, <laughs> one day I might write a book <laughs> <laughs> on some of my stories. <laughs> I will. But I, I got nothing but love for EJ. Uh, you know I, I wish him the best of luck in the uh, CFL. Um, you know, and I, and uh, you know, he's turned into a you know to a to a great man, um, and uh, you know, he helped turn his, turn his life around. That's cool. So you mentioned National Signing Day. What is that day like? I know now there's two signing periods essentially. Um, what is that day like? I mean, it's chaos for us, and we're not even involved. Like, how how does that day work? If someone doesn't know what it's like, kind of take us through that day. Yeah, good yeah, question. It's it's a little different now. It, it's kind of it's not. The same. The early signing period is not the same as the old days when it's February, and uh, you know that would be the only night that I would sleep in the in the office would be on signing day. You know, because you a you're just making sure everybody's signing. You know, uh, like EJ Pryor, I had to stay on the phone all night just to make sure really? that he wasn't going to sign with somebody else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean it, it. It it's it's you know I guess the longer I've been in it, the less like I'm not as as stressed out. I'm a very emotional person. I get emotional, especially when it comes to recruiting. You know, I take it hard when we don't, you know, we don't sign a kid. Um, but you know, it, it's it's a lot of chaos. I mean, the thing is, you just want to have communication, regardless of the recruit. You just want to have a a communication line. Yeah. So usually the day before you, okay. So what time we sign these papers? So and we'll write down every so we know. I, tell you, I'm, I don't want to bug you, but that day you go get bugged. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you say 701, you know, uh, we're calling you, uh, you know, hey, what's, what you know, uh, when, when is it coming in? When's it, nowadays, you know, before you said we on the fax. Nowadays right. you can just take a picture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's no excuse. No, just take that picture, send it. You it's know, like the fax line's busy or anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Um, but it's, it's usually excitement. Um, you know, and the thing is, it's excitement for us as a program, but it's excitement for, you know, for the family and kids because you know this is something, the beginning of something. You know, like you said with Biggie, like, 
you know, I remember that day. I remember the video. You know, now everybody does video. You know, yeah. he was a trailblazer. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. me. Yeah. He was a trailblazer on that video. And we got him for that. We did We did a little, uh, Scott Thompson did a video about, uh, you know, should you do In-N-Out, McDonald's, a uh, parody of uh, of his video of <laughs> In-N-Out, McDonald's. And we, we reenacted the whole thing. Went through the, I mean, it's, it's hilarious. Awesome. Oh, and we played it on a team meeting. It's hilarious. I mean, Biggie got a kick out of it. But, you know, it, you see that, you remember signing day, and then you remember NFL draft day. And, uh, you know, I, guess I tell kids, like, I, I, don't want, I don't need no tickets from you or anything, but just you want them to, to fulfill their dreams. And, uh, you know, that signing day is the first day that their dreams start. You know, you've been playing it from Pop Warner, youth football, and then now you're a USC Trojan. And, uh, you know, like I said, we signed some great players. Uh, we got great players on our team uh, as we speak, and we're gonna have a great season. August thirty first. <laughs> yeah. Knew that was coming. Fresno State. Go get your tickets. Call Craig. Call Jessica in our marketing department. Get your tickets. You so kind you, of mentioned. Right. Sorry, just one more question. Oh, yeah, you yeah. mentioned it already. Early signing day and the early signing period. How much does that change? Kind of the excitement. One and two. Your strategy and timing and and recruiting. Well, I think now you got to sign everybody in. Uh, in, uh, the early period? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to. I mean, because, you know, like a couple years ago, we had uh, Isaac Taylor Stewart and uh, Elijah Griffin. And it's probably, I think it was two, three other kids. We didn't sign. They didn't have SEC offers. Then all of a sudden, you know, we've been recruiting all year, and then Alabama doesn't get who they wanted. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, OG, here, here goes a – you know, Alabama offer, and it's just like, well, hold on, hold on, time out. <laughs> they weren't even recruiting you. And now, because remember, the SEC does things different. They get bonuses off of recruiting, how they how they finish in, in ranking. Oh, the coaches, so they'll, the just sign, stuff, yeah, yeah. they'll just sign a kid just to get a boost in ranking. And you'll just be casualty, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, so, you know, it, it becomes a battle because if the kids who you don't sign – they can if of a, if a team like Alabama signed ninety percent of their players and they're going after one kid. Well, they got 10, 11 coaches all going after that one kid. Yeah, because their whole class is full except for one correct, or two spots. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And if you haven't signed, you're you're spread out. Uh, but nowadays, like I said, most people are signing uh, kids early, and then they're using the second part to to basically be just a, a beginning of spring football. Yeah. So. How have you had to adjust your strategy as a recruiting staff, you know, with that? Because obviously I think some programs didn't realize how big of an impact it would have initially, and some some programs were slow to, to change. How have you guys adapted your strategy? Do you just move the schedule up? Well, yeah, I mean, you have to. I mean, this thing, you, every, first question you got to ask a kid is, when are you signing? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because before, like I said, before – Whenever it's February, of course, it's snowing in Michigan, it's snowing <laughs> in Ohio State, you know, and we're bringing all of our official visitors in mm -hmm. in January, February. It's, it's 80 degrees, you know. Uh, you know, the, the Grammys and everything else is going on in L.A. Um, and now everybody's signing. Now they got the spring recruiting. So the, the your, your schools that it snows, they're bringing everybody in spring, so you don't even know what – you know what's going what on? Like, yeah, yeah, you don't know what winter's like. Nebraska bring everybody in the spring, so you don't have to be there in November. <laughs> you know, and you know if you live in Nebraska, you're not bringing anybody in January. There's nothing going on in Lincoln, Nebraska. You know, nothing wrong with Lincoln, Nebraska. But I'm just saying, there's nothing going on. Um, but you know, it's it's just evolving. You just have to every kid. You every kid has should have a separate plan. Yeah. So, but that was an advantage for USC before. So it's something you kind of have to adjust to. There was like sort of like a built-in advantage that you correct, guys have. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, and like I say, you just got, you just got to adjust with the time. Yeah, the All Star games was messing up because then you got these kids they want to announce on All Star games. And right. It's like, Which okay, is after, after the signing period. Yeah. It's just like so. I'm supposed to wait, <laughs> deal with, you know, the Alabama and Clemson's coming in at the end, and you know, telling you how great you are and. You know, you and you all, have some players that actually signed and then would uh, wait to announce them. I think Talanoga I, ended up doing that. Yeah, like I don't I, like he had signed with USC early, but didn't did announce he? until. Did yeah, he? I think he signed and then wanted to announce at the Poly Bowl a great, or something. Talanoga's gonna be a great player. Great player. He, he is. We when I got to interview him in Hawaii when uh, at the Polynesian Bowl, it's like 
you're going to take our jobs. Like, you know, you, he's going to be he's a communication major. He, you know, great. he asked about that. He's going to be really good. Great ambassador. After his football career, which is going to be great. He's going to be good. Yeah. Great kid. Great ambassador uh, for the program. Um, like I said, helps out in all recruiting. Uh, does a lot. Like I said, we got a lot of great kids. Uh, but just want to give a shout out to Tyler Noah. Nice. Uh, we have a kind of tougher question from Brandon on YouTube. He says, how does Gavin feel about the perception that USC is late on recruits, especially those outside of the West? Outside of the West? Yes. That we're late on kids outside the West? I think so. That's that what you he have started the recruiting cycle later. There's a lot of kids that have been getting offers. USC and what UCLA is, what, right what, now what, are what, known what, as being what is late offer? in the in – the, What is an offer? An offer I mean, is, is, offer? is flowers on a first date, as Gerard <laughs> Martinez What is, what is an offer? So I can say, you know, I'm the 45th offer. I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> hey, my – you know, thank – you know, shout out to Morehouse. You're my 45th offer. You know, uh, I got Alabama, USC, and Ohio State. Like, I, I just think the offers have changed. Can you commit? You know, a, a school down south can come off for every kid in L.A. because they know they're not going to commit. Um, you know, trying to watch my word, trying to watch my word. They're words, not like committable. Off, yeah, so there's, sometimes there are offers that aren't it, committable. It, so if the, the kid said, hey, I'll commit, they're like, well, no, that's not really. And the NCAA needs that. We're in, the, in the NFL, I just break this down. In the NFL, their scouts can go to all of our practices, they can go to Senior Bowl, they can go to games, they can go to, to you know, um, they can have private workouts, bring people in. We can't do none of that. You got camps. Most of the top kids don't even show up to camps anymore. Can't go to the opening. We're all the good on good. Yeah. You can't go to Rivals 100. It's good on good. You can't go to NFTC. Good on good. You can't go to the seven-on-seven seven terms when it's good on good. Okay, so how do you evaluate? Okay, so our jobs are on the line, and we get the least amount of tape to evaluate a kid. You you can only go to one game. Okay, you know, NCAA rules, one game. You can only visit that school one time. Um, spring ball, you can go twice. If they're even doing things, you know, any if they're doing uh, physical, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not phys yeah, physical activities, competitive. competitive activities. So you're trying to make a decision on a kid, and you do not have all your information gathered. Okay, so a lot of times, yeah, they say Alabama, Auburn, everybody. Okay, they offer. So springtime is your time to go out there and evaluate. Then you have camp time, which is another time that you evaluate. Okay, then you have the season that you evaluate. So it's three parts of evaluation. We like to evaluate because, like I said, once you – remember, these kids have five years. You know, USC, once you sign, you're there for five years. We don't run kids out. We don't – so you want to make sure that you have done all your homework on this kid from a – from a from a uh, um, um, you know, from a, you know, from a personality standpoint. Does he go fit in your locker room? Um, in a culture standpoint, and also from a football standpoint. And sometimes it takes time, um, you know. Academics and, and that too? Academics or? as well. Like that's another thing people understand. Like We need to see your academics. Some people, we won't get final grades on kids until June. So, you know, if a kid has a 1.9, we're not going to offer. Yeah. Yeah, Auburn can offer. Georgia can offer. <laughs> they probably don't even care what his academics are, you know. But we do, you know. And uh, you know, you got to make sure that it's not just a kid. Is he going to make it on an academic level? Because USC is not the easiest school, you know. Um, and you know, and we have the greatest support system for academic. But it's not that they won't make it. But it's are they going to put the effort in? Mm -hmm. And that's what you want to see. Is a kid missing school? That's the biggest thing. GPA is effort. Those misses attendance. Attendance. Yeah, that's 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 the big red flag. Okay. Cause they ain't showing them to school. They ain't showing the weightlifting. They ain't showing up to class. They ain't showing up to a lot of stuff. So it's a lot of stuff that goes. And I hear it. You know, we're slow. No, we just want to make sure we're doing it the right way. 
and and you know you know we're not waiting to the eighth to, you know every eighth to offer somebody <laughs> you know we got plenty of offers out there you know we got plenty of offers out there and, and sometimes like i said if it's a kid that you think this is the thing if it's a kid that you think that you're good enough to be at SC, well, come to camp and show it. Prove it. We give out plenty of offers at camp. That is true. Rising Stars, <laughs> June 15th. Come check us out. Okay? June 15th. Promotion. I love yeah. This you know, so so if you think you're good enough, come out there. Prove us. You know? Because otherwise kids say, oh, I, you know, they – and like I said, it's a – every day we're, we're watching. Like I said, with Graham, we've been watching tape every day. And, uh, um, you know, like I said – we want the best, you know. We want the best. We're uh, we're pretty close to the top of the hour. We don't want to keep uh, uh, Gavin too long. So is there any kind of rapid fire stuff we want to go on? Or you sure, know? we can do some rapid fire. Uh, yeah. You had a lot of compliments on your hat. Uh, people job. wanted to know your favorite Nipsey Hussle song. My favorite Nipsey Hussle song? Yes. Uh, Double Up. Uh, rest in peace, Nipsey. Um, I'm from the Crenshaw District, so. Um, I live four blocks away from the Marathon store. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, Nipsey meant a lot to my neighborhood. It meant a lot to, to the culture, to the youth. Um, and, you know, and, uh, you know, I hope a lot of positives come out uh, of the Nipsey. Um, and, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm from L.A., but, you know, this is – I represent my neighborhood in this Crenshaw. I, you know, because I – I asked my wife, I said, should I, you know, put an SC hat on or my Crenshaw hat on? She said the Crenshaw hat. And I said, you know, I think sometimes people don't embrace their culture. And, you know, I'm proud of where I'm from. And I never want to leave where I'm from. I think it's the best neighborhood in the world. Even I become a billionaire, I at least have a house there in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just glad that the world got to know what type of person. And, and they got to know our, our neighborhood. You know, people in China know Crenshaw, and they, they're trying to order a Crenshaw hat. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the marathon got to continue. And uh, a lot of a lot of the positive stuff with Nipsey, um, you know, from, from you, know, I, when, you know, when I had a chance to buy my house a couple of years ago, I didn't leave my neighborhood. And a lot of that was because of Nipsey when it was, you know, stay, you know, just because you make it, you don't have to move and, and do that. You can, you can help build up your own neighborhood. And uh, that's what I did. So I, you know, I represent my neighborhood. You know, I think Clay left me where I, about at least twice we got my Kershaw hat on <laughs> in the you got office. The FC shirt. I, mean. I have yeah, an FC polo. I have an FC polo. On. Yeah. But uh, you know. Oh yeah, you probably can't think that here. He has an FC polo. We'll, we'll <laughs> trying to cover my stomach. Up, but <laughs> all oh, the sorry, we'll put it back. Yeah, we'll <laughs> but you know, I, I like I said, if, if you're if you're an LA kid. You know, the marathon needs to continue at SC. You know, we we need to keep all our our great kids in uh, in LA. You know, I know it's an SC is not for everybody, and uh, you know the ones who want to win, who want to who have city pride, who who want to put this city, you know, you know put SC put this city back on the map because we got a chance to, like I said, do something special this year. Um, you know, we we took our lumps last year so that we can't. We played a lot of young guys, a lot of play about thirty freshmen, uh, red shirt freshmen, so that this year we can be successful. You know, NFL, Tom Brady's been there 20 years. For us, a veteran is red shirt sophomore. That's a veteran. So we, we played a lot of young guys. And this year is going to pay off. We're talented. We're talented. So August 31st, <laughs> Fresno State, come check us out. You must have if, sold a whole if bunch you're of tickets a kid, already. Yeah. June 15th, Rising Star. We got two sessions. Go sign on, fightoncamp.com. You know, never miss miss an opportunity to promote <laughs> this great university. We said you're um, part of everything. We didn't know yeah. you're part of the marketing team as nah, well. But, yeah. I, but I also I want to give a shout out to my, my uh, on a serious note, my guy, Trey Johnson. Um, because when Easy left, uh, it was me and, um, and Trey in the office. And people don't know the spring spring recruiting is probably the most difficult time for recruiting. Okay. Um, you you have two months. You have to plan ten coaches to go see every school in the country. And yeah, my, May my, evaluation. It may may yeah, spring yeah. evaluation period. And my man Trey slept in the office, planning out every route, every school, having every coach's number. I mean, binders so all of our coaches were prepared when they hit the road. Uh, Pete, you know, he doesn't, you know, get the credit, but my man Trey works his butt off. All Trojan fans should, you know, give a shout out to him because Trey Johnson, you know, he's a true Trojan. 
Um, you know, now we got a great team with uh, Spencer, who, who's, you know, I like my man. Spence, fiery, competitive, Raider fan, Dodger fan, Laker fan. Um, but you like you know, him because of all that. Yeah. Nah, I, li- I like it because he likes to win. He's competitive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he wants to bring great players here. Uh, we got Kelsey. We got Ryan Miller. Um, you know, like I said, we got good things going on. You know, I know everybody, everybody think I'm blowing smoke, but I wouldn't be here saying these things if I didn't believe in it, you know, and uh, I'm confident, you know, and like I said, either you're with us or against us. So, you know, and I think all Trojans, we need to, you know, we got to stick together, period, period. No matter what it is, our kids deserve it. So, like I said, I appreciate you guys. You know, I hope I didn't bore you. Uh, you know, I hope no. I didn't say anything I wasn't supposed to. We still uh, have a couple questions for Okay, you. well, let's just Where? keep shooting. I got time, you know. <laughs> Can I get a score update on the basketball game? Oh, we did not. <laughs> SNS Production says, have you ever met some a recruit that you instantly didn't like? Oh, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I, I'll just admit this ain't going to work. I've had to commit. The guy on our team that I almost had to send, you know, I said, Clay, hey, me and him, ain't, we're not seeing eye to eye right now. <laughs> you know, and luckily it did work out, and the kid, you know, oh, Milwaukee won. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. That's uh, unofficial visits, official visits. You get to know, they get to know, you know, kids always think official visits about them. No, it's about us seeing, will that kid – fit into our program, into our culture. That's why you bring around your players. And I, I ask my players all the time, is, they, is he our kind of guy? You know, and, and they always – your players will always be honest. Like, yeah, yeah, like I don't know about this guy, you know. And, uh, and I, I, you know, um, so, yeah, you, no, it's a two-way street in recruiting. Um, it's a two-way street. You know, we're, we're evaluating do we like the kids or not. Uh, you mentioned uh – Players going pro. Steve says, uh, "Is there anything in the USC program that teaches players how to be financially responsible?" Uh, yeah, I, they seems gotta, like it's they, like a common problem yeah, in the NFL. I they mean, try to address a, it, but it's just they take classes. Um, we do things. We have uh, programs, um, you know, for financial things. But I'm 40 years old, and I have you know problems dealing my finances and stuff. You know. That's um, called having a second child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was getting expensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I mean, we do. Uh, and uh, that's something that, um, you know, it's a program that, you know, I, I wanted to bring in some uh, mentors from different uh, aspects in life in the business world to come in and speak to our kids. And it's something that, that we're working on to start that program up, Just not, not even just from financial, but, you know, you know, some kids. You know, if you take them to a, a fine, fine, you know, a, a fine dining, they don't know what a salad fork, a regular fork, a butter knife, a regular knife. What's a water glass? What's a wine glass? Um, and they might be at a, you know, trying to be pro. You might be sitting in front of a general manager or owner of a team, and you got to know how to present yourself. You know, I still don't know how to use all those. I was about to say, Shaka needs to take that course. Shaka, you can come. I'll let you know when (laughs) when, when we have that. We had a biscuit bar at my wedding, so you can just skip all that. Biscuit and gravy. Yeah, biscuit and gravy. There we go, baby. The South. (laughs) Uh, We had multiple questions about if the air raid, uh, new air raid ish offense that you guys have now, does that affect or impact how you recruit to certain players? Oh. How does it affect? It? Yeah, we're gonna score a lot of touchdowns, <laughs> a lot of touchdowns. You go, we're gonna get you the ball in space, and let you go. That's what playmakers are for. We're gonna get you the ball in space, and we'll let you make plays. Is, is this why you're always rooting for the receivers at practice? I always. <laughs> well, I, you've always no. been an offensive guy at practice. You know, every so, once in a while, you'll, you'll cheer on Biggie after you make a nice play. <laughs> but that's <laughs> only after he made the play. Before the play, you're always an offensive guy. <laughs> we had. So, a, we I, were trying to see whether or not you root solely for the offense. I was sticking up for you and said you root for everyone, but you uh, kind of only root for the offense. Well, okay. <laughs> so you gotta sit. I sit in all offensive of meetings. I work out of the <laughs> offensive of staff. When you know when T was our OC, I was the assistant, assistant, assistant wide receiver coach. <laughs> now that Graham's there, I'm the assistant, assistant air raid director. Mm, nice. Okay. Uh, you know, um, we didn't put that in your title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm an assistant, sense. assistant air raid, uh, air raid director. But no, nah, you know the thing is, I think practice it need to be competitive, um, and 
you know, we, we hit each other. How many months we play? So I try to bring, I try to bring something out, you know, and uh, uh, just, you know, get the juices flowing. Um, try to make it fun out there, um, you know. Cause like I said, our kids, they're, they're going. You know, pe people just don't understand how hard our kids were. I mean, when on practice, you might have 6 a.m. workouts, 8 a.m. class, you know. Then you know, class from 8 to 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 1, and then you have to go. Then we got team meetings at two or eight. You got a class from eight to one fifty. Then you got team meeting two. Some kids barely even got time to eat. They grab something, just walk in our team meeting. Then they go to practice, and then they got tutoring, and they might not get home till eight thirty. And then you got to redo it all yeah. over again. So, you know, you want to bring like you want to bring something. Sometimes, sometimes you know, sometimes you get to practice, your energy's not there. So okay, well let's bring it out. And uh, that's what I try to do, you know. And, and you know, my guys always win. Whoever my guys are, they always win. Remember that. <laughs> I roll ever, with the winners. I roll with the winners. Do you ever hurt from the chest bumps? Sometimes I see them and I'm uh, like, ooh, that was a, a rough one. <laughs> nah, nah. I'm, as you can tell, I look good. You know, I, I, I stay. I spend a lot of time in the weight room. You gotta follow Gavin on Instagram. <laughs> He's uh, funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. He'll be teaching. You know. USC basketball players, he's teaching them how to shoot jump shots. About, hey, I was in there with Marvin Bagley today <laughs> working on his shot. Then, uh, you know, play basketball with my Texas crew. Um, you know, and it's, there's a certain recruit out there that, that texts me every day about my basketball skills. And I see you. You know who you are. I see you one-on-one -on -one any day. You know, I'm a rock that he can beat me in basketball, but I got him. Nice. I think, yeah, I think that was one of your Instagram stories where you're Talking trash with Amon Ross St. Brown. Oh, yeah. I talk you, trash with the best. How you can though. hoop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, we had a see. question on YouTube about what's the hardest part of your job? What do you think it is? Uh, being away from my family. Uh, I think that's for anybody in this profession, not just USC. Um, I think just for Clay, you know, he, he preaches faith, family, football. And like I said, my wife works. You know, she travels once a week. You know, I have my kids at work, and, you know, Clay allows us to have our kids at work. Um, you know, and of course, you don't have them every day, but, you know, we, you know, if it's emergency, you got to bring them up there or there's something that I have to go see my, you know, pick up my son or something, he gives me that freedom. But, yeah, it's just being away from people just understand just how much time. It's just, it's not just Monday through Friday. Saturday, you know, that's when the kids are off from school. They want to come up. Then Sunday. Then during the season, okay, it's Monday through Saturday for games. And then, you know, we're back up there on Sunday morning. You know, we, we can fly back from Notre Dame, land at 4. These coaches are back in the office at 10 a.m., you know. Um, so you're away from your family a lot. Like, if, if it's, it's tough. I, that's what one thing I think the NCAA needs to look at is about making more dead periods so that, you know, Coaches, because people just, just recruiting is just is nonstop. It's burning people out. I mean, I'm talking to other coaches across the country. They just getting burnt out with the recruiting, because now you're recruiting kids two years, three years. Like you said offers. Kids want offers as a freshman for what? I might not even be here. You want to offer as a freshman? Are you serious? But you know, you're away from your family. Um, you know, like official visitors. That's 48 hours away from your family, nonstop. Um, and it's just it's t it's tough. Um, you know, luckily, you know, my wife's, you know, supportive. Um, but, you know, we got, you know, some of our coaches sleep in the office two, three times a week and they're away from their families. Our head coach stays, sleeps in the office. He's away from his family. So that's the toughest part, just being away from your family. And, uh, you know, but like I said, working for Clay, you know, he, he makes it where it is a family environment. We bring our families up every Tuesday. Um, you know, he doesn't just, just say it. He, he preaches it. And uh, uh, I think my, my daughter was, you know, at practice, I mean, in the office the other day. My wife just dropped her off at, like, 2 o'clock, and she was in there. We, we were watching film with Graham, and, you know, she's learning. She's learning. She's learning. She's learning. Nice. She's very cute, by the way. You see yes, the Instagram story. Very cute. Yeah. Um, do you ever feel like you're off? I know with texting kids all the time, do you feel like I there's ever – it ain't never off. Yeah. <laughs> it's just never off. I mean, and, and this thing, like, it's not just recruiting, but I deal with a lot of stuff. Everyone talks about but it's also stuff where our, our players, our current players yeah. go through stuff that you have to deal with. Like, we have 110 players, and 
not everything's perfect in their life. And so you don't just have recruits. You have players that go through things that you have to be there for. But, yeah, recruiting's not. And it's not just the players. You got parents. You got to, you got to recruit the players. You got to recruit the parent. Then you got to recruit the 707 coach. Then you got to recruit the high school coach. It's nonstop. <laughs> it's nonstop. <laughs> but I love it. You know, I'm blessed that I call this work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an L.A. kid that used to drive past the Coliseum every day, and I never get the day Sark gave me the call to come to U.S. I cry. You know, I still get emotional now because I drove past the Coliseum, like, every day. And, you know, um, I was good enough to play at USC, but I decided to go to Morehouse. <laughs> but since I couldn't play at, Mor at USC because I decided to go to Morehouse, mm -hmm. like, I get to work here. And, you know, like, my uncles, um, you know, rest in peace, Bubba Scott, my uncle AC, um, Jimmy Gunn, rest in peace. You know, so I was raised around SC. So, like, this was a dream. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to mess this one up. Like, like I told, when I remember Sark hired him, I said, you don't have to worry about, about me. Like, like this is this is what I was, some people were born to do. Like, I couldn't believe that I got this opportunity. And, uh, you know, I want to be, a, I want to be a Trojan for life. I want my kids to go to SC. So it's not just, I tell people, I, I don't want your son to come. I want my kids to come here. I'm going to stay here for another 18 years, you know. But, uh, you Unless know. the Lakers call? Hey, Janie, if you call, I am gone. <laughs> <laughs> I am gone. We're going to be in the championship game next year, you know. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Kawhi, we'll get whoever we need to get. But, uh, you know, I'm just blessed, you know, and the Trojan family has embraced me. I know, you know, I, I always say, you know, at a, for the Pac-12 Trojans fans, we're the best. We're the loudest, we're the most divided, but, you know, every Saturday we come together. You know, we come from all different backgrounds and stuff, and, you know, you know, some people are mad at this coach, some people are mad about this, some people are mad about that. But all I'm saying is, August 31st, <laughs> be there, <laughs> Fresno State, we're going to come together, and I promise you, I promise, write, write this down, I promise you, we're going to make up for last year, I promise you, you don't have to worry about it, we're going to make up for last year. We'll, we'll go make up for it. Yeah, nice. Well, you said you didn't want to screw it up, like when you told Sarky you were not going to screw it up. Hopefully, we didn't screw this up for you. And I know <laughs> you probably have like 15 text messages for. Oh, my phone been buzzing. I don't even <laughs> want to see why we're sitting here. I don't even want to see. I, I mean, I, I see. Uh, hold on. That's what, not, see, now I, got, I told some buddies. Now they just. They oh, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah there, there were a couple of comments referencing back to you being a top U.S. collegiate football prospect. So I, I, I figured those were your. Uh, your, your buddies. Your yeah, buddy. I mean, I you know, like I, like I tell our players, you know, you're lucky I'm a little older, but in my heyday, <laughs> I would have locked Amara Pittman. I for sure would have locked down. Like, there's no question. Uh, you know, I, I was I was I was a hell of an athlete. You know, maybe one of the best to come out of L.A. You know, um, you know, you got the Kawhi, James Harden, <laughs> me, you know, Russell Westbrook. Stacked up, yeah. You know, um, I, was, I was I was pretty good. And shout out to St. Monica's, the greatest high school. Never lost to Sarah. So all my Adoree, John Houston, <laughs> Max Williams. I've never lost to Sarah High School. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> Remember that. Green and gold, baby, forever. <laughs> awesome. Shotgun, are there any final uh, last-minute questions that I missed? Um, I mean, there's a lot of recruiting questions that Gavin cannot answer. I know. So, it's uh, a minefield. Catch me at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> So not really. We should probably, yeah, we Alrighty. should probably wrap it up and stuff. We'll answer some of those questions next week, potentially. Yes, yes. So yeah. make sure you tune in next week. Oh, here's, week. here's one. This was about a specific recruit, but I thought it was an interesting. Let's take the recruit out of it. But what do you do to keep a recruit that is a commit? You know, mm -hmm. a guy commits and, you know, even if it's if you if a guy were to commit today, how do you keep him until December? What do you do? What changes in the relationship there once a guy says that he's committed to you? I mean, you, you, of course you start recruiting. I mean, not recruiting, but <sighs> – I, it's it's different because every kid's different. Like it's no, there's no general answer. Some kids want to, some remember what you're not doing. Somebody else is doing, and that's what you always have to remember. So if you're not gonna call him, text him every day, somebody probably is. Makes sense. If you're not gonna call him once a week, or not you can't call him once a week. But if you're not gonna tell him to call you once a week, some you know. Well, a lot of schools, they'll just call them, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, you know, so for me, you have to have a working relationship with the kid. And like I said, once you have a relationship, it's like, hey, look, this is 
going to hit you two, three times a week. You hit me, whatever. And this is how it's going to be. And, you know, I, like I said, I build relationships with my kids. Like, if something's going wrong, just tell me. You know, like, you know, especially if I'm recruiting a kid, he's not committed. I'm like, like, don't waste my time. Like, if you're not feeling us or you, you feeling another school, just be up front with me. Just let me know, hey, look, gee, I love you, but I'm going over here. I, and I'm going to respect that. Like, I, I'm going to respect that. Because that means you're respecting my time. And I'm not just turning my wheels and wasting our time or wasting my coach's time. And we're still going to recruit you now. But in the back of our mind, we know, okay, A, this is the school to beat or this is – and also I want to know what, what's the reason, why. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's no – everybody thinks there's a magic formula. formula to recruiting. There isn't. You know, I mean – there isn't. I mean, every ki every kid is different. Mm -hmm. Every family's different. Every every recruit's looking for something different. Some looking for NFL. Some looking for education. Some looking for location. Some kids don't like yeah. big cities. Some kids like big cities. So it's different. You, and that's the whole thing about the whole process of of building relationships and understanding what the needs of the kid. Uh, you know what they want, what they're trying to accomplish. And once you figure out once you figure out that, you can start answering the questions and it makes it easier. Cuz once you answer the questions, then it's like, okay, so why are you not a Trojan? Yeah. I mean, you have the reason the, a reason to go to USC for one kid could be the exact opposite for exactly. someone else. It's like and I want to be in a big city or I don't want to be in a big city. It's yeah. like you, you know, it's just so, different. Some kids all they want to hear about the NFL. Okay? Then some ki some kids or parents that's the last thing they want to hear about. You better know you better yeah. know that mm -hmm. so you don't because go in you can lose it. that kid yeah. off of that. Now, lucky for us, we sell education because that's the most important thing, period, period, is education. And, uh, you know, because you're, there's a good chance you're not going to the NFL. Let's just be honest. And I tell kids because we have, we have a draft board, and it has uh, 500 and I think nine, should be 10, shout out to Reggie Bush, um, names. And I, I always tell kids, I said, tens of thousands of kids have walked through these doors. There's only 509 on this board, and we're the most. You better get your education. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good sell there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, we should probably uh, – yeah, wrap it up. Big <laughs> thanks to Gavin again for yes, coming on the show. Right, we're glad we finally thanks, got you. Gavin. Appreciate um, you. August 31st, Fresno State. Yeah. And thanks to Clay Helton, too, for, you yes. know, because, you know, yeah. he uh, gave the permission for you to come on. So, Big shout out. Uh, thanks Helton. to Clay and, you know, Tim Teslo and, you know, helping us uh, set yeah. this up. So thanks. And hopefully this is a formative. Someone already said, I appreciate the way USC rec recruits a lot more now. So people now see kind of the behind the scenes and how much work actually goes into recruiting. And I would say, we're not going to be, per we're not going to get every kid. We're going to try to get the best. You're not always going to agree with this. You're not, you might not see what we see. We're gonna, all I can guarantee is that we're going to give it the best. And, you know, when we step on that field August 31st and every Saturday or Friday of next year, we're going to give it our best. And believe me, last year is eating us inside. Um, me as a person, I know, as, you know, our coaches as well. Um, that's why we made changes. Uh, we've done things differently. We've, you know, as myself, I looked at myself in the mirror. What, 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 what was I doing wrong? Why did, what happened? And, uh, you know, I, I'm, you never get too old to learn new things or to self-evaluate. And I think we did some self-evaluating, and you will see a different product on the field, recruiting, all that. And like I said, just go get your tickets August 31st. It's going to be fun, exciting. Remember, Trota, we stick together through good and bad. We always stick together. So August 31st, I expect it to be a sell. I don't want to hear nothing else. <laughs> August 31st, we're there no matter what because it's about the kids, not about us as adults. It's about the kids. Remember that. If nice. you don't know the, the date of the home opener after watching this show, <laughs> there's something wrong with right. you. August 31st. Uh, but thanks again, Gavin, for coming on the show. That's Ryan. That's Shotgun. I'm Keely. We'll see you all next week. Today was a later start. We'll be back at 6 on Wednesday, so make sure you stay tuned to that. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up, and we'll see you all next week. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.